In this video, I'm going to be having a look at absolute and comparative advantage. Now, these two theories form the base of international trade in which we see um, today in the world. So let's start with absolute advantage. Now, this was formulated by the great thinker Adam Smith. And he was um, the guy with this theory who founded the basis for international trade. Now, all Adam Smith said was following on from his theory of specialization and division of labor. He said if one country is better at producing a certain product, i.e. produces a product cheaper than another country, it should specialise in that product. And the other country might will be probably cheaper at producing a different product than this country, so they should specialise in that. And hence, the two countries should trade, and this should lead to increase in world output. So now let's see an example of this to make things clearer. So, absolute advantage, here we are. Sorry, is this the wrong way around? Yep, yeah, sorry, this way. Okay. Um, so assuming we have two countries, UK and India, we have two products, mangas and pharmaceuticals, and we have all the resources in the UK are split in half. 50% go to the pharmaceutical industry, 50% go to mangas. They produce a grand total of 12 products, 10 in pharmaceuticals, 2 in mangas. Same for India. Get 100% of its resources, land, labour, capital, enterprise, 50% go to pharmaceuticals, and they produce 4 50% go to mangoes and they produce 8. Now, before any international trade, the world output for mangoes would be 8, um, sorry, 10. 2 plus 8 equals 10. And the world output for pharmaceuticals would be 14. 10 plus 4 equals 14. Now, what um, Adam Smith said is actually the UK should specialise in pharmaceuticals. Why? Because it has absolute advantage over India. 10 is greater than 4. And if, if the UK specialises in pharmaceuticals, that means it produces no mangoes. 100% of resources come into pharmaceuticals and the world output for pharmaceuticals becomes 20. In India, on the other hand, if they specialise in mangoes, because obviously they have an absolute advantage, 8 is greater than 2, then what happens is the world output for mangoes becomes 16 because the 50% of um, resources which are in pharmaceuticals move to mangoes and you get 16 mangoes and you get 20 pharmaceuticals and world output increases. Now David Ricardo came along, he had a problem with this theory because what happens when two countries have the same um, number and can produce at the same level? What David Ricardo said is that it is stupid for Adam Smith to basically suggest that the countries together should um, the country should simply not trade if this is the case. So he said that there we can look at opportunity costs to formulate comparative advantage which helps to increase world output further than what Adam Smith had even thought about. Now in essence what David Ricard is basically saying, I'm going to go through an example to make this clearer, is in each country whichever product has the lowest opportunity cost they should specialize in that product and then trade with another nation so usually people end up trading if their opportunity cost is the same then obviously there's not really any advantage it doesn't matter who produces what so let's have a look at an example of tablecloths and cars between the UK and Brazil so again we have the UK and Brazil get 100% of its resources and they split between 50% in tablecloths, 50% in cars. Now the UK's grand total before anything is 10 plus 8, 18 products, 10 cars, 8 tablecloths, Brazil 4 cars and 1 tablecloth. Now I've chosen these figures as a way of an example but it usually can be true because some countries don't have the technology or the skilled labour, hence they are less than whatever the UK. Now if we look at the um, if we look at just normally, without any advantage, if there was no trade, the world output would be 14 cars and 9 tablecloths. Now if we look at absolute advantage, the UK has absolute advantage in both products over Brazil. So the UK would need to produce those two and Brazil would have zero output. Now with um, absolute advantage, the world uh, output of cars would be 10 and the world output for tablecloths would be Eight. Now, as we can see, this is not necessarily better off because before the world output for tablecloths was nine and cars fourteen, so it's actually become less. 
Now, what comparative advantage states is let's look at the opportunity cost first. So, the opportunity cost of producing cars, so let's just quickly go over opportunity cost, is the cost of foregoing the next best alternative, and it is calculated by total loss over total gain. So, the opportunity cost of producing cars in the UK is the loss of eight tablecloths over the gain of 10 cars equals 0 0.8. And the opportunity cost of cars in Brazil is a cost of one tablecloth over four cars, which means 0 0.25. Now, Brazil has a lower opportunity cost than the UK. The UK is foregoing many more tablecloths than Brazil. Hence, Brazil should specialize in cars. Now, opportunity cost for tablecloths, same thing. So, if the UK want to produce tablecloths, they lose 10 cars, but they gain 8 tablecloths, so that's 1.25. Opportunity cost of tablecloths again for Brazil now they lose four cars over one tablecloth, which is four. The opportunity cost is clearly smaller for the UK, so they should specialize in producing tablecloths. Now, the world advantage with um, sorry, the world output with comparative advantage becomes eight cars and 16 tablecloths. Now, it's not necessarily better off, as we can see in terms of cars of world output, but usually, when you'll see with other examples, I'm sure in textbooks and stuff, not just with my video, um, comparative advantage does actually work, and it's much better. Now, there are several problems with comparative advantage, and my main one is that with both comparative and absolute advantage, there's way too many assumptions. You have to assume that a country can move easily from producing, uh, if you look at the UK when we had about the mangoes and the pharmaceuticals and the UK should specialise in pharmaceuticals, you have to assume this perfect factor mobility. That means that all the resources which were in pharmaceuticals and all the uh, resources which were there can easily start, sorry, all the resources which were in the mangoes can easily start working the pharmaceuticals. So all the farmers, UK farmers farming mangoes can suddenly start um, creating pharmaceuticals, manufacturing work, they can, you have to assume that. Another, another thing, you have to assume that there's only two countries, two goods, because if you start doing a lot more products, a lot more goods, it gets quite complicated and it's not very easy to use method, in my opinion. Also, transport costs, it's not a multifactorial system. It doesn't take into account that not just the cost of producing and selling a product you look at, you have to look at the transport costs, and doesn't look at whether countries add tariffs, quotas, all these other policies in place. It's more like if it was a completely free market, which is a big assumption because we know that from the world today it isn't. Um, and constant cost it assumes, which what it basically is saying is that if a country can only produce a few, what's not to say that if you gave them the chance to uh, produce much more, they could produce it more cheaply because of gaining from economies of scale. Only for the time being, if the country is small, it only needs a certain amount of products, it might not benefit from it. So it doesn't take into account the cost change because, as we know, the average cost curve goes like that, you know, cost change all the time. So there's a lot of problems. I don't particularly like either theory because I don't think it works because of the assumptions, but you know, it does the job and I guess for economists that's the main thing. Thank you for watching. Please visit my blog.